Let's talk about printing. Printing in Python is especially useful for debugging your code. Now, right now, our code is actually not very hard at all, so it's pretty easy to, to debug it. But eventually, our code is going to become several dozens of lines or hundreds of lines long, and debugging is going to be a lot harder. And because we don't have some sort of debugging uh, tool or, or program installed, most people will just rely on the print function, the print statement. And so in their code, they'll say, does this work? And then test more stuff. And somewhere down the line, they're going to say, does this still work? And the idea is that this one will show up and this one probably won't. And then they can assess that the code sort of breaks or their logic breaks somewhere in the middle. And that's how a lot of people debug with Python. There's, that's actually not wrong. That's not a wrong way of doing it. But when it comes to printing, there is a nice way to print things like variables. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's talk about different ways to print. So prior to Python 3.6, you're going to see this a lot. So let's create a variable. Course is equal to Python for everybody. And the print statement will look something like this. The course you are in is, then you've got these curly, bra these curly brackets inside of the string. So inside of your quotation marks here, dot format. So this is a method. And whatever you put in here as that first parameter is going to be automatically filled in here. So dot format course. And let's go ahead and just run this. And it says the course you are in is Python for everybody. So we didn't actually write this in here. Python was smart enough to say, take whatever this is. And oh, okay, there's a couple curly braces in here. So let's uh, go ahead and apply whatever course is to this. So we can also change this to anything. Rerun this and it says the course you are in is anything. So I'll just undo that. Now that's prior to Python 3.6. You'll see that quite a bit in Python 3.5. Now you can also do this with variables. So you could say uh, a greeting is equal to welcome person's name. You are sitting in the course name. And we could do format, welcome, let's say Caleb. And the second one in here, because this first one's going to match up with this first parameter this method parameter. And the second one in here is going to be the second one. And that one's going to be course. And when I show you greeting, it says, welcome, Caleb, you are sitting in Python for everybody. And again, that's very popular before Python 3.6. Now, just to show you which version of Python I'm using, I'm going to use a command here right on the command line, Python 3.7.2. So I have Python 3.6 and newer. And there's a better way of doing this in Python 3.6 and newer. And it's this idea of an F string, F strings. And so an F string really is just starts with the letter F and then you have some sort of string in there. And you could say anything you want. Now by default, this is going to work totally fine. Now the nice thing about F, and you can think about this as a shortcut for the word format, is you can put your variables directly in here. You don't have to use dot format or anything else. You can just say, uh, let's use a different sentence. Hello, name, welcome to course. And so we just use these opening and closing curly braces right inside of the string. Now this only works if you have that F at the very beginning. So watch this, this will not work. This just says, hello, name, welcome to course. But if I put that F in front of it, actually this is going to error for me because there's no variable called name. So uh, it's going to try to run this and it will error because it's trying to find a variable that doesn't exist. So let's see this in action. We get a name error. Name is not defined. That's this one right here. So let's go ahead and say name is equal to and let's use my cat Henry. Hello, Henry. Welcome to Python for everybody. And this is an F string. You're going to see this in Python 3.6 and later. So any version of Python 3.6 or later, you'll see these F strings. And F strings are really, really nice. You can actually do all sorts of stuff inside of them too. Let's run an example here where you say, hello, name upper and course dot swap case, swap case. And so inside of these curly braces, we have the variable itself called name. We have another one in here called course. And because they already come with functions attached to them, they're pre-attached, so they're called methods, 
We run that in here, and we're going to see, look at that, uppercase and swap case. So now let's go ahead and use a real life example. Example. Let's ask the user for their name. So let's say username is equal to input in put. What is your name? And I'll put a space at the end there, just so it looks a little nicer. And then I'm going to say print an F string. Hello. Username. Welcome to Python. And it's going to ask me what my name is. What is your name? In this case, the name is going to be John. Hello, John. Welcome to Python. And so that username just matches here. And again, remember, you need to have that F. If you don't have that F at the beginning of that quotation mark, this does not work. Let's try this out again. Let's use this name of uh, Jake. Hello. Oh, well, that doesn't work. And if you ever see something like this, that's just because you're missing that F. So that's all that is. And of course, it can be totally empty if you wanted it to be. So that is a little example on uh, how we can print using dot .format in Python 3.5 or earlier, and for Python 3.6 and newer, you can use these nice F strings.